Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're back today with not only my 1956 Beetle, Eleanor, who's right behind me here, but uh, just what the hell is a Clico? That's a Clico. And we're going to go into depth as to what exactly a Clico is, how to use one, and exactly how to join panels together. At least how I do it. I'm sure there's a lot of seasoned welders out there that have a much more efficient or better way to do it. But this is what I've learned using the tools and parts that I've got. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. So for those of you that's your first time here, please click that little subscribe button down below. Please like the video. Comment. Please pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out the Facebook group page. That's right. Duckman Cycles of VW Garage is a group page that discusses my projects as well as any other projects that anybody else wants to share. So thanks you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Bop. Okay, we're back on my makeshift welding table. So yeah, it's made of plywood and you can see all the burn marks in it, but you know what, I don't care. It's a weathered piece of plywood. It's been sitting outside and it kind of stretched and it's not really good for anything anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be welding on this thing today. But what we've got here is we've got Clecos and these are 3 16 inches and they come in uh, several different sizes. I believe 3 16 quarter inch and 5 16 I got the smallest ones on purpose because what does that mean? That means you have to drill the smallest hole possible to uh, install these suckers, which also means that you have the smallest hole to fill when it comes time to weld. Let's go ahead and demonstrate exactly what these are, and there's a few things that we've got. Uh, not only is there a Clico, but there's a Clico tool, and this is the little tool that releases this guy, and that's how that works. And what a Clico is, is a glorified rivet, and it's a quick release rivet. So once you've got the tool and the Clico, you would load it in the tool just like this. You go up to your panel where your 3 16 inch hole is, and you squeeze it and press it into the hole and release and then take the tool off and now it's in the panel and then once you want to remove it and this is the beautiful thing about these they're very easy to remove you would squeeze it and pull the whole thing right back out so these are very very awesome rivets that are quickly and easily removable so if you need to move your panel back around for some reason you haven't made your cuts yet and you haven't committed to it I like to take maybe about three, four of Clecos maybe, and depending upon the size of the panel, I'll drill holes around the outside area of it and uh, lock a few of these into place and not only take measurements, but sometimes I'll eyeball the situation. And sometimes eyeballing makes all the difference in the world. Even though your measurements might be accurate, the car may not look right. It may not be the most appealing shape. And that comes into play with Eleanor. When I built Eleanor, a lot of the measurements just were off and I had to eyeball it. And that's where this comes into play. You can actually put these things in there, take your measurements, adjust things with your eyes before you make any of the final cuts. And you do that final weld. Because once you've done that, well, there's really no going back. It's, it's much more work to cut everything apart. Then you got to fill the gaps where all the seams used to be, you know, where things didn't line up and you end up with a real big mess. So let's go ahead and demonstrate here on a couple pieces of metal exactly how to make these work. Now what I've got over here clamped to the bench is a piece of Eleanor's metal and you can probably tell by the green color that was her original color and this was also a piece. Now you want to start with some clean metal whenever you do any welding at all. Uh, this has been sandblasted. Uh, I probably wouldn't advise welding through paint unless you were in an absolute emergency. Let's say you were trapped in the woods somewhere and you had to fix your car you know, to get home. Then you got to weld through paint. You got to do what you got to do. But in this case, we have the time and the tools to, to clean it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But what we want to do, let's just say that we've already eyeballed it. This is the car. This is the panel I want to add. And I want to put it approximately right here. Okay. Okay. Now, generally, when I combine two panels, oh crap. So let's just say we wanted this panel right here. And the minimum overlap that you're going to want is probably about half an inch, no matter which size Clico you want, because you're going to need a little bit of meat on each side to push this sucker in. So you're going to have to get some type of clamp. And in this case, because everything is wide open as it is, one of these nice flat jawed clamps should work just fine to hold everything in place. Now I've also got little guys like this that would do the job. And sometimes if you need to reach around a little bigger, you can go with something like that. Or if you really have to reach around a really large gap, we got monsters like this that will actually attach from quite a distance back to get you around some type of contour of the body or through a window opening or something to lock it down. But 
using these little bits that we've got here, and putting back on the one that shot itself back off, that should be enough to lock this sucker in place. Okay, now using our 3 16 drill bit, we're gonna go ahead and pop three holes in the sucker, and I'm recommending no less than three holes, and I'm gonna get into that in just a minute as to why, but typically, you're gonna wanna use a punch. It'd be nice if I had it ready, but I don't, because I'm a dummy. Now, typically, you get warmed up with your punch. Punch your three holes. Ooh, it's not clicking like it's supposed to. Okay, we're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, it still made a dimple good enough. Where's that one over here? Right here. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and get our holes drilled where our center punch made it. All right, now that we've got our three holes, we're gonna load up our Clico tool, just like that. Squeeze and push it through the panel. Release, and now that panel is locked together. Do it again. And lastly, for our third one. Now what we've got is we've got a locked panel here and we can take our clamps back off. Now as demonstrated here, we have a nice solidly locked panel. These rivets are actively holding this thing together. Now what I would do in this case is because now that I know exactly where I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna figure out my approximate cut line. My cut line is, and this is gonna be kind of crooked, because I'm freehanding it here looking through a camera lens. Now let's just say this is gonna be my cut line. We're gonna go right through them Clecos. That gives you an approximate as to where we're going to be. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start cutting along the edge, and you can pick either end, but I'm gonna start cutting along the edge right along this line, and you wanna go as straight as possible. This is kind of a jaggy line, like I said, because I'm looking through the camera screen while I was trying to do it, reaching around in an awkward way so I don't bump that tripod. Okay, we've got this sucker clamped together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one of two things. You can use a body saw on this. Body saw is kind of slow, but sometimes you want to go slow and you want more control. You can also use a sawzall. Sawzall is much faster, but you lose a little bit of that control. It also, sawzalls and body saws have a tendency to not make straight lines. Now you can also use your, your angle grinder with a cutting blade in it. And those are very, very self-centering. They have a tendency to want to go straight because the blade is so long and so thin. So you can actually cut this in more of a straight line. Now I recommend making the thinnest cut possible. And usually the thinnest cut is going to be with your body saw. Now my body saw is actually on the fritz right now. I don't know why, but I break the damn thing so damn often. I'm gonna actually hit this with the sawzall instead. Now we're gonna start cutting along here, and when we start to get close to this Clico, we're gonna pop it out. All right, I've gotten close enough to this Clico that it needs to come out. And this is the reason why we have three instead of just two, because if I had one remaining, the whole panel would swivel. But in this case, I have the two, two are locking it in, and the third one doesn't matter whether it's there or not, everything's gonna stay straight. So we're gonna continue to cut right through that hole. And this table is the worst table for this, because it's way too shaky. But we'll keep on cutting anyway. Now at this point, I like to start peeling these surfaces back. You can peel back the top side and the bottom side, and you have a perfect seam through here for welding, perfect. Now you can do one of two things here. You can use one of these lovely panel clamps, and I really love these things. Earl and I had this discussion. I watched him use some of these on some of the Christine cars that he has built. But uh, these are really simple. What these clamps do is you slide it through the seam in the panel, and then you put the little bar the backhand side of it like that, then you tighten down the wing nut. And what it does is it pulls the two panels together and locks them in solid. Now depending upon what kind of panel I'm working on, sometimes after using the Clecos, I'm done. I know I'm straight, I don't need to go any further with it. But sometimes I still might find myself having to slide it back and forth a little bit, and that's where these really come into play because you can play with the side to side action a little bit. It won't go this way, of course, because your panel is, is now effectively cut. Continue cutting through here, and normally I wouldn't put the Clecos quite this close, but in this case, because this sucker is here, I'm actually in my own way. 
<laughs> but now I have a clamp here and I have a clamp here. So now this middle guy can actually come out. And once again, that panel is locked in, it's solid. So you can continue cutting the rest of the way all the way up to this Clico and then put in the next panel clamp right through here in the middle, remove this Clico and keep right on going. And then once you've got these cuts made, you should have three of these clamps in place where the Clicos once were. As you can see right here, we got all three of these panel clamps in place. And now it's very easy to get in between them and to do your welding in here. Once that welding is done, you can then pull out your pin on the backhand side, the bar, and pull the clamp out the top. And then you have an attached panel. Once all the clamps are out, you can then weld in between your welds and finish the seam. Now I don't recommend you make a bead all the way across because generally you're going to warp the panel, but you want to do maybe a half an inch or even up to an inch at a time depending upon what your heat settings are on your welder. Don't put too much heat in the panel, you're going to bend the crap out of it. But with these clamps in place, you can now very easily weld in between and we're going to demonstrate that right now. Okay, we're ready to start doing that welding between these panels. So it's just a matter of getting in here, making sure our weld speed and heat are set to the proper. And get in here and uh, start tacking away. Hang on a second, my mask is not darkening like it's supposed to. Oh! Okay, I think I got it. Let's try it again. Much better. We are very roughly tacked in. I would normally add a little more weld to it than that, but I think that ought to be enough to hold it. We can start taking these clamps out. First the bar from the back side, then the clamp itself. Repeat with the next, loosen, loosen. First the bar, then the clamp, and our last one right here. Now this one's actually in there a little tight. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes these panels will shrink a little bit. I'm glad you guys get to see this here. <laughs> there we go, okay. Now we have a perfectly joined panel here. Now you do see there is a little bit of a gap. It's really small, it's less than an eighth of an inch. And it's really easy to stitch weld in here and get this thing filled in. And like I said, you only want to do maybe about a half an inch to an inch at a time. So hit here, and then maybe hit here, and then go back here. You know, find your way through this thing, alternating occasionally. And depending upon the size of the panel, you might find yourself here welding for quite a while. But in summary, that's really all there is to it. I don't think I need to finish the stitch welding on it. I don't think a demonstration on that is going to do nothing but waste my materials. But I think you guys get the gist of what's going on here. And as you can see, it's, it's a strong panel. I mean, it's only got three, three tacks on there, and it's holding up pretty good. And this is a flux core weld, by the way. I'm using a B setting on my Lincoln 140 HD welder, and I'm using a wire speed of about four and a half on here right now. Normally, I play with that a little bit to see if I have any burn through. I didn't have any this time. Actually, these welds, they look pretty good. There's an awful lot of slag on it because it's typical flux, but that shows that you can actually do this with a... Very cheap welding equipment and some really inexpensive, and Clicos really are inexpensive. These little tools are just awesome. And these welding clamps also are not expensive. And down below in the video description, I'm going to put links to where you can get these items. Because these are something, if you're going to be doing any type of panel welding on a car, or really any kind of panel welding on anything, even if you're putting together a, a filing cabinet or a refrigerator, <laughs> if you're one of them antique appliance repair guys, and you, know, you want to put together panels, you will need some of these things on occasion. So I recommend these highly, really, absolutely I do. So if you liked what I did here, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to join Duckman Cycles and VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. As always, discuss it on my projects, and maybe people will be asking a couple questions as to uh, how to weld panels together. And maybe people will also have insight. As you know how it is, the whole internet is full of experts. And I know there are people that are better than I at this. You could talk to Earl over there at uh, CCC. He's probably going to be doing the paint job on Eleanor, by the way. He did the Christine movie car. And just coincidentally, I'm wearing the Christine movie car shirt right now. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, Christine. And of course, there's A-Bomb 79. You know, he's an 
excellent, excellent, not only welder, fabricator, machinist, the whole works, and a guy I've never mentioned before, Chucky2009. I watch his welding stuff all the time, and primarily it's what he does. He does welding, and I mean, he is just really sharp at it, really good, and he looks like one of my best friends. I'm going to put their two pictures up here on the screen for you to see. Maybe you'll have a laugh like I do, but when I first saw him on the screen, I thought he was my buddy. I'm like, what is he doing welding? I don't know him for welding. <laughs> He's a computer programmer. But anyways, thanks you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. This is our midday Q&A video, and I try to do one of these every day, so hopefully we'll have another one up tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Now these Clecos and clamps were really, really important to building this car, especially up here in the front roof area. These so many different panels in here held together, the original 56 beetle part, some of the donor roof metal that I put up in here, and these A-pillars which I made. I could not get A-pillars from an early beetle that were in decent shape, so I ended up using some from a later model beetle, and then I widened them myself and clamped everything together, so this car looked like a porcupine for a little while. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a future video. The process of not only building this car, but the chopping of the top and a whole bunch of other things where I had a lot of a lot of photographs from around that time I didn't do a whole lot of videos because my camcorder was stolen or lost or something I still haven't found it. I don't know where it went, but uh, <laughs> There will be a video of that coming up in the very very near future Pretty good weapon. I got here the next time I see a bratty kid walk down the street. Guess what? Zah!